Hey, future Xavier here chiming in to, uh, at the start of the podcast to announce that my buddies at Monochrome are doing a fundraiser on the 24th of October. They'll be hosting an open league for Valorant. Have your name be credited in a trailer or have your name in their Hall of Fame if you donate a certain amount. For those who are looking to win more than names on halls, can partake in the league and get cash prize. Those who want to tune in when it all goes down can tune in on their Twitch channel. All information regarding Monochrome and the fundraiser will be on the description below. To those who will be participating, all the best to you, Radiance, and those who will be tuning in, please enjoy. Now on to the show. Call my name, you lack the cheerfulness of Hypnos and the competence of Thanatos, but have more willfulness than both combined. Hello. Hello, everyone. So, how uh, how are we starting this? Uh, let let's go let's go the typical the typical way. How's how's your day? How's what what you have been doing? Have you been hating playing Hades again? I'm surprised, well, because you know you've been playing the game for the whole entire entire week. Ever since we finished the first, we wrapped up our first episode. We've been playing it, and then I just keep seeing you. You keep updating me, and then and and then suddenly it's like, oh, I finished this. The fuck. <laughs> Very slow day, you know. Uh, tis tis a tis a slow day. Uh, this this video might be dated, but uh, it's a slow day because you know the death of the queen uh is such a such a heart wrenching moment. Uh, who gives a shit? <laughs> so, as the title suggests, we deal with Hades today, and actually not just Hades, actually just rogue likes in general. But Hades is because we've been uh Jay's been playing Hades. For very recently, finished it in faster than I could have. It took me months to play that game. I had to gain some some fucking footing to play that game. I mean, then again, right? You you played it like months, but you still had like how how many hours? Thirty two, thirty five ish, I think. Thirty two, thirty five, right? Mm -hmm. But then again, right? It's a, it's more of a it's actually an impressive feat that you can play for like weeks because I I lost a bit of patience, I lost a bit of uh, morale and stuff, and and the thing is, this is technically one of your first few combat games, though. Yeah, actually, because I never really played any high intense combat. Like the last yeah. combat games you played was Monster Hunter, and you had my help, and I taught you everything that I know. So, if anything, that's that's actually uh, on your end is a... Oh crap, I think I forgot to add up your volume. Mm -hmm. uh, it's basically, you're, you're right, you are in a way better, better in Hades than I am. Oh, that's a really huge compliment. <laughs> but because... then again, right, uh, yeah, it's my uh, kind of first, like, uh, fast... Fast pace, uh, fast pace action pack games, you know, because you know, obviously, I play Genshin, but Genshin is not as fast paced as you want. If anyone right. tells me that Genshin is a high octane combat game, I either tell you to eat glue, or if I have money, I'll gladly like give you one of my games to try it out, and you tell me that Genshin is a fast paced active act or high octane combat, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, but then again, yeah, you you said also like I played Monsanto. Yeah, Monsanto is is you know fast pace for you know for reactions and stuff. Yeah, exactly. You need there's a lot of demand uh, in Monster Hunter. There's a lot of demands in in the combat of the game, and also mm. there's a lot of skill that takes uh that takes in in the game. You know. Yeah, I guess that's where I fumbled a bit because you know obviously like one of my first time playing it. And I don't know, probably because it's 3D, like fully 3D. Fully 3D, you have to yeah. deal with camera where yeah. Hades had only an isometric camera, right? So you don't have to worry. And everything's on the map. You don't have to worry yep. about suddenly Rathalos or like suddenly 
uh, the the bow the bone headed hydra is gonna slap your tail clean yeah. off. You know. But hey, it's a it's a how how's so if that's that's the start, right? That's that's like your real first like proper taste of combat games. How how is combat games to you? Uh, how how is combat games to me? Yeah, how like the the first like taste. Uh, do you think oh. that you want to escalate that the the feeling of adrenaline, or or you want to stay here for a bit, be comfortable first, and then you go into like higher demanding games? Because this is also the first game that you're you are properly utilizing your keep uh, your controller, right? Yeah, this is this is my first time. I finally use my controller controller well. Because before this, I use it for like I I was trying it on like obviously Monster Hunter. Monster Hunter. And then I said I have problems with fumbling um, with cameras and stuff. And since uh, Hades is a game that you just have like, uh, yeah, what do you say? Isometric camera. Isometric. Yep. Vision, isometric view. Yeah. So uh, I don't I don't really we we don't really like uh use the camera like because it is fixed it's already and fixed yeah. yeah it's already fixed so you don't need to do anything for the cameras so just i'm i just uh do do the fights you know you, you just button, focus yeah. on fighting button mashing and stuff like that yeah and my and my my attack button is already <laughs> it's already loose by now by just mashing it right it's just one attack yeah. button yeah, 60 hours playing it, you know? <laughs> and that's why... Uh, this is not a sponsor, but I would suggest you pick up uh, a controller that I use, which it's not mm. mashing it. They have a thing called a turbo mode, a proper turbo mode, where uh -huh. you can just hold the button and it considers as a different inputs instead of a whole button. So meaning if you, you hold it, you'll just spam attack. Let's say, for example. Oh, nice. Well, I mean... Uh... This controller still works. So this controller still works, you know. It, yeah. Unless, hey, really, really, if you want to pay extra, I'll gladly buy this man <laughs> another controller, a better one, you know. <gasps> All right. So, okay, now the thing, the thing about Hades, right? Uh, for those who are not in the know, Hades is, if I believe correctly, it is the passion. Wait, I'm trying to remember from my head. Passion. Transistor, pirate. yeah, okay. So it's the fourth game entry, which is funny because we just covered a fourth rare one right there last week. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a scary number, or actually, leave number four, but we'll 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 go about it later. Um, it is the fourth game in Super Giant's uh, library of games that they make, and this one uh, is a Rogue Light that was released in twelfth of August two thousand and twenty uh, two thousand twenty one, actually. During the lockdown pandemic. So, mm -hmm. uh, if you really think about it, uh, Super Giants is a company, a game company that is known for their narrative works. High, uh, a lot of their narrative works. Every game that you uh, that you see from them is more or less uh, focused on more narrative. Um, with with Hades being one of their most ambitious work yet. So, for example, uh, Bastion, uh, Pyre alone uh, was the introduction from to the company of branching dialogues. That every single dialogue that you do, every single thing that you do in the game has some level of consequences. So that every ending feels like it fits a certain uh, what your actions were in the game, and it's easier to be uh, to be dealt uh, can be do and done. Because it is uh, it is only by dialogue. You only hear it by dialogue. You don't see like cutscenes or anything like David Cage's games. Very very. Uh, Scott David C David Cage has a nice idea, but poor poor execution on it. It's easier to de to do dialogue, of course, and it's easy just okay tick some boxes. Hades is the next level to this, on top of a well built well in depth. Uh, combat system such as the boons, weapons, level generations are not, despite commonly, uh, roguelites. Uh, Jay, do you know about roguelites? How they generate their maps? No, actually. The maps are generated, if I remember correctly, uh, computer, a, a normal, a normal roguelite, a normal roguelike 
are generated uh, randomly by a computer. So it's never the same. But it's also like uh, it has certain things, it's certain certain assets and everything. But it will be generated so uh, quite differently every single time. In Hades, a lot of the level designs are already set. It's just the order of how the level is rearranged is computer generated. Everything else is handmade, hand tuned mm -hmm. to make sure that the players can see where he, uh, where Zagreus is, is on the field always. And Zagreus had to go through a bunch of redesigns. Oh boy, we'll go there one later. It was a fun, it was a fun story to uh, to read up on. All right, all right. So. That out of the way, right? Let's let's start with our first uh the gameplay. Since Jay was the most recent one to be playing the game, I only played it once for preparation for this. <laughs> you take the lead. Alright, uh uh for Hades, right. I always like to play hack and slash, like before this I just played like mobile games. Of course. Uh, of hack and slash because you know, mobile games hack and slash are free. Free and easy. And yeah. And back then, you know, we don't have any money. We just so young. We don't we don't know anything about it. We still don't have money though. <laughs> yeah, we still don't have money, but we have some money that we can spend on game. On rent. <laughs> on rent. <laughs> Help us. <laughs> uh so yeah, like like I like I said before, this is like my first not my first rope. Light, wait. My first rogue light, but my, but not my first rogue like. It's not your first rogue. <laughs> yeah, it's not my first rogue basically because my first rogue light games are Slay the Spire. Man spent two hundred hours yeah, on it. This deck of uh deck building games, which is basically like uh yeah like computer generated, uh but still is predictable at some parts. Okay. Um. Yeah. I. I. I have like a hundred and six hours on that. Slade Spire, and I haven't even finished the game because you know I'm so bad at deck building games. <laughs> here's the thing. Here's the you. You mentioned about more. Pre uh, more predictable, right? Mm -hmm. You want to? Okay. Uh, this is a bit of a tangent, but don't worry. We'll we'll get back to we'll get back to the Hades later. Fun fact about Slade Spire is that Slade Spire has a thing called. Uh, I don't remember the specific name, but but everything that is based on chance happens before you start the match. Mm. So your enemies, your decks, your hand, everything is set. Whatever decision uh. that you do and upon reaction to it is kind of set in stone. It's not, uh, because if I remember correctly, Slade Spire also tells you uh, what the enemy is going to do, right? The next, the next turn. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, that that in a way is the the reason why. And the reason it's also out of um, response to player feedback saying that they like it better when they know what the enemy is going to do. Yeah. It's a curb to make sure that it's not too unfair, but at the same time yeah. has enough rogueness for it to to be a rogue like uh, slash rogue uh, rogue like. Yeah, because it's a it's a turn based turn based game, obviously. So information is very yeah. important. Yeah, cartoon based, but every single, uh, every single stages, right? For yep. for like Hades, we have like oh, uh, they just uh shows the, uh, the gift, the rewards that you will get like a nectar, gem, gemstones, or the darkness, right? The the rewards oh. is set uh yeah, for you to choose. Yeah, and kid? there are some indications that uh they just want to know, they just want to say oh. This this chamber is hard, and then this chamber has a mini boss, right? Yeah, so they so, they preemptively tell you that so you can prepare. Yeah. So just like just like Slay the Spire, it also has like uh okay for example Slay the Spire, in the first the first realm mm -hmm. kinda they have like three predictable uh mini boss just like just like Hades which also has in Tartarus, you have three. Well, if you do, if you haven't finished the game, you only have two predictable boss. But if you finish the game, you have three predictable boss. So you know, if you went into a chamber that has like a a skull symbol, right? A skull symbol. Skull symbol and two light bolts. Yeah, 
and that indicates that's a mini boss so yeah so then again like the the last one okay wait i'll tell i'll tell about the gameplay first go, go, okay don't worry. <laughs> so obviously it's fast paced i never tried it before and you know the first the first few runs were just me like mashing buttons because i don't know shit i am so proud uh, yeah <laughs> You know, because it was just me panicking and then just me dying from traps all the time. Is the equivalent of just be through <laughs> just a big, uh, a big mom, mama bird is just throwing her kid off and it's like go fly. Yeah, <laughs> and then you you'll hit you hit a lot of uh, cliffs and stuff. You know, but unlike unlike the bird that probably die permanently. <laughs> In the game, you you just you just came back and you just try again, try again, try again every time. It's so a fun about roguelites, yeah. So yeah, I I like how it has so so many different weapons choices, you know, from range to just... melee to a hybrid of both, which is the spear, which is basically my main <laughs> weapon that I then that I'm using, which is just you can just uh do melee and you can just range do range obviously i i honestly the sword is the easiest one because you know it's a starter it's a, it's starter, a starter weapon. weapon it's the most straightforward and surprise yeah. surprise the sword is the most overrated weapon in history but i love it <laughs> yeah you know if it's overrated even if even if it's overrated even if it's easier what's the harm of using it you know exactly yeah as long as you're having fun with the game as long as uh, even if you don't try any of those weapons which is fine you know it doesn't mean that you miss out almost of the game you know it depends on how you want to play it exactly you know? yeah and also like each weapon has their own like unique design animations and perks and even hidden lore behind them aspects of ex- aspects of arthur yeah aspect of the arthur which is like a hidden a hidden aspect because uh like every single uh weapons there's six weapons right yep there's the uh there's, uh, there's a, the sword there's, there's a the spear there's the shield gauntlets the gun the, the gauntlet the gun and, and the bow bow and arrow yeah so like every single one of it has four forms which is a lot so so much like... yeah and and each each form has their own perks Perks. which you know yeah uh for for you for you to choose like oh what kind of gameplay that you wanted you know because if if you're stuck with one weapon and one gameplay style then you're gonna get bored quickly yeah you, you're gonna get bored quickly i got bored of uh witcher witcher which is the uh, unrelated but you know one weapon only you got bored even though it's so mm-hmm. great game until they made cyberpunk carry on <laughs> <laughs> so yeah like uh there's a lot of combinations basically like six weapons and each of them has like four variants that you can choose aspects yep and then that's not to mention we got uh bo- uh not boons yet the the items that we have in our house for for collect uh there's incentivize by making uh by bond by bonding with certain characters in hades house of hades and also in the underworld and the olympians that's the keepsakes right the keepsakes so... is a combination with the weapons so yeah, some weapon yeah. might be better than the other or yeah. the whole ordeal and this doesn't even include the boons yet yeah which is which is my next point actually and there we go <laughs> thank you for the segue <laughs> I, I, I... So like, yeah. So the concept of boons from the gods, like, it is so interesting when you think about it, especially because it is based on a, a Greek mythology, which is a a real with a, a mythology that we all probably we, know. We all already. we all know shoved into our mouths, feet from little, and mm-hmm. is the most go to. Uh, mythology that anyone wants to write about mythology, they go to Greeks because it's so easy to write it out. and it's just there, it's out there because the Greek can't shut up of how great they were <laughs> so yeah, like each god like each deity have their own benefits relative to the mythological powers like Zeus, obviously Lightning they bolts. have like 
uh, bolts, lightning bolts that uh, that can jump. The damage can jump from one enemy to another. Uh, that have... is the static one, right? Yeah. Yeah. And then you have Aphrodite, which to charm and to for for weakness, which I guess makes sense. Uh, shred. Yeah. So defense shredding. Yeah. And, and then, then you have like Ares, which is the god of war, which is a pure damage. <laughs> It just pure, just pure damage, yeah. <laughs> which I, which I like so much. Every stash for the win. Yeah, and there's there's like five main boons, right? Which is the the normal attack, your special attack. There's the yeah, the your... normal attack, special cast, call, cast, and call, dash, and dash, yeah. And there's then five the... boons, and then there's a lot of countless additional ones. Accelerate, that... uh, accelerate ones, yeah. Yeah, that 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 will help you in, uh, in your journey through through the realms, through the for you know for defeating enemies and such. So and then the thing is, you can mix and match the boons to suit your taste and also your Play style. and also weapon. Yeah, the weapon. Yeah, the weapon is already in tune. So meaning that if you grab a spear, you will never get a sword boon. Yeah, never. So all of this is already for sword. So like Poseidon's. Let's say for example, Poseidon's uh, special. If you grab yeah. the spear, it it knocks you back right. Yeah. And if you use uh, say the sword, it it has a, a knockback effect as well. Yeah. And I don't was it yeah the one of them basically and then like if you upgrade it further, you can cause rupture, which is amazing. Yeah. yeah. That, that, that's what I like also right. Uh, they have like each one of them has like effects of their own. Yeah. Uh, like Athena have the flag. Athena and... has the flag and also impervious, I think. Yeah. The flag and impervious. And if you have uh if you met her again and take a boon again, you have I forgot what's the what's the name of it. Expose, I think. Oh yeah, so basically that if any enemy gets hit by a deflected attack, they will be exposed. Yeah, they will be exposed. So everything <laughs> every backstep damage you did will increase basically yeah there we go yeah like how like like xavier said like poseidon has rupture uh what is it called before that yeah. uh basically knockback yeah knockback and then if you if you got another one they have rupture which is basically boom <laughs> as yeah as long as the enemy moves they will take damage for a certain time and then there's which is... yeah which is uh yeah and then there is uh who is it who who again zeus has uh, uh lightning yeah. bolts and then zeus, uh yeah, static zeus has lightning effects and and there's jolted jolted effects yeah jolted. which is basically like uh stun, hit, i think a bit, yeah, of stun. a bit of stun and then the, the the one is you hit one enemy it kind of branches off a bit yeah 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 and then uh it uh, and the, the let's not forget that all of these uh, boons also have their passive version. So like, uh, if I'm correctly, Zeus had uh, increase uh, call uh, increase call uh, charge. Yeah, 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 yeah. So and Poseidon has increased treasure hunting, uh, meaning that yeah, you get yeah. more resources. Um, what was Ares passive again? I forgot. Ares passive. Oh yeah, or uh, increase your damage, like. There we go. And yeah. when you get hit, uh, they will be inflicted with damage themselves, like a thorn. Yeah. Which is. Oh, that that one, I, that one I really like. Like, if you if you take damage, like they have this splash damage to to other enemies. Yeah, exactly. It's yeah. So and it's so in depth because, and the thing is, the the interesting part is that uh, if you look back on the development side of things. These deities actually come in one by one. Did you know that Athena, or the one that you get the first playthrough, was not mm. implemented in the first build of the game? Oh, really? Yeah, it wasn't. It was in an, in an update. Ah. Well, I guess it's a, it, it has a perk also to, to play a bit late, you know? <laughs> I had, like, Hades since 2021, I think. Yeah, because Steam version, uh, when the when the Steam version came out, uh, came out, it was already the full version. The the, the early access was in Epic Games actually. Mm, yeah. The reason yeah, why yeah. they did in Epic Games is because 
uh, despite what they do, that I don't agree. That's the only few things I agree is that all games, especially on release week, they get ten percent. Uh, they get uh, Epic. On they need to only pay Epic ten percent of the revenue, while Steam, GOG, and some uh, PlayStation and also Xbox, you have to pay thirty percent flat. Uh, no matter when, the, the moment you just release the game out into into their platform, you have to pay thirty percent. Meaning that mm. the first week, the devs actually get more money, uh, because you only have to pay ten ten percent, and after subsequent week. They go to flat thirty percent in later uh, times. I see, I see. So, so in- yeah, the that's the so yeah, that's the boons, right? Uh, also, you know, obviously the the boons you have you got you got before because you know in the story, uh, the Olymp- the Olympians uh really wants to help Zagreus to escape the underworld, right? Because they're family. Yeah, because they're family. And then there's chaos. <laughs> and then there's chaos is just like, I'm here yeah, for I'm you, here. my grandchild. Yeah, I'll give you this, but there's certain conditions on uh, how many encounters that you will get, uh, what is it, uh, either damage or, you know, what is it called? Not handicap. What is the opposite of handicap? Uh, you basically get uh, caveats. So basically yeah, yeah. you... I give you this, but first you deal with my challenge first. Yeah, yeah. Prove me worthy. That. You get the you get the thing, and the yeah. thing is that's kind of fun, uh, which is interesting, because imagine this, right? Imagine there's a total of ten deities, ten special boons with their own ten special style uh, ways of buffing your uh, uh, your character, and it branches out quite a while, and then you go, and that doesn't even conclude. That it doesn't even include duo systems. Yeah. Right. Dual systems yeah, yeah. and how each and every one of them is connected to your weapon. It's so fucking in depth that yeah, it's, it's mm. so much that it's so good, you know, because it has so much to do. Like, like every single weapon has their own upgrades, obviously from uh daily boons, right? The daily boons, and then you connect it with whatever god that you take, mm-hmm. and then you combine it with any other passive and everything. All that in 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 a quick second, which kind of also proves how powerful the engine is to calculate all of that. Yeah, and mind you, like every single every single time you pick a boon, you you have only three to choose. Have only three, so choices yeah. matter. Yeah, and then you have like how many rarities? Four? You have common, rare, you eh, know, rare, uncommon. Which is green, I think. Uh, blue, which is uh, rare. Purple is epic, and then there's heroic. Yeah, and, and then there's, there's a normal heroic. one. Yeah, and then there's common, and there's also yeah, that's hero- heroic. Basically, is the is is the highest for common boons, I guess. It's basically the the easiest way of saying this is basically winning a gacha. Yeah. <laughs> And then you have like uh, dual boons and you have legendary boons, you know? Yep, exactly. Oh yeah, I forgot legendary. Yeah. I guess probably because legendary is very hard to come by. It's in the name, and, you know? Yeah, it's, it's in the name, legendary, you know? And you know, uh, chaos boons, right? That has obviously a high risk, but the payoff is so big sometimes, especially if you got epic for... <laughs> That also chaos de- boons, yeah. also depends on your luck. Yeah, uh, it really depends on your luck. I fucking hate that guy sometimes. <laughs> yeah, sometimes like uh, the conditions like oh, if you if you attack, you're minus four four HP, which is which is so heavy, you know. Because but then what's funny is like jokes on you. I have Athena special. I'm a spam her special. I'm a spam her special, and I'm just a walking shield. Because <laughs> I use swords. Yeah. So like that's that's the basically the how how the power system in the in Hades is right. Yep. And then there's the four realms, which is Tartarus, Tartarus Asphodel, Asphodel, Elysium, and Styx. The reverse Dix. I'm Styx. <laughs> and you have like Tartarus, really actually a good starter place. This is obviously for. Obviously, it's for it's, a beginner, right? It's very straightforward. Uh, Walda plays 
uh lots of actually if you realize lots of pillars for for you to break to help you yeah uh a lot of uh chests and everything uh, you notice that a lot of chests there right for like mm -hmm. uh, coins and also ovals and everything yeah and the most easiest of enemies literally your starting point yeah Unless and you, you have a sense of a chamber that which will is... give you either healing money money or darkness or... that can help you permanently change your stats your stats yeah basically well, and that's really a good starter thing because like you because, you expect people to lose your health very quickly there yeah. you expect because yeah, especially especially for your like first 20 runs or so right especially yeah exactly and also not to mention that it's not just a beginner thing um there's also options for you if you are already a veteran in the game where hey if you don't if you think you can just perfect the run you could always choose the coin and get more boons or get more get more hearts yeah, or you yeah, can yeah. get your 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 darkness and uh increase your level it's up to you yeah. it's up to your priority and what you think you can handle yeah yeah and See? then you know uh obviously uh probably you you probably die a lot from you know uh the unpredictableness of the enemies you know because sometimes you you get hit too you know yeah exactly and remind you like the first few runs of the game you don't have death defiance oh no no that is a crutch that we both abuse to high heavens yeah. <laughs> you, you don't have death defiance no you do not and, yeah and that's where uh the darkness came because you know the yeah. the mirror that nyx gave you will give you maximum three uh death defiance that, uh pro that just like the name you technically have four lives you essentially um, have uh wait you can get one three three death defiance was it yep yeah so basically yeah you're you have four lives you have the first yeah, run yeah. and then the rest of the death defiance yeah and that doesn't include the least. yeah and yeah your your first world would probably be meg you know because it's the first boss of the game you don't know that uh, electo you... electo will not be summoned until you reach elysium uh elysium i think if i remember correctly or was it as well really? there, there was a I certain think... criteria that you have to do with meg the I think, uh, I think like as long as you reach asphodel and you defeated meg because obviously you can only you can only see meg before you you went to asphodel right yep you only need to see meg first yeah so yeah, uh, your first wall is mag, which is quite hard for for first players because, uh, very fast and bullet hell, uh, you know, and then and, yeah, not to mention like Meg's place has a lot of uh, what is it traps, uh, quite a, quite a lot amount of traps also, right? Yep, traps and and then there's the whole. Uh, moving around at the speed of fucking sound, yeah. uh, around the map, and then just going impervious so that you can just shoot a bunch of stuff in your face all over the whole map. Yeah, and not to not to mention she also can summon some. And we some have it. Yeah, and we have a creatures. touch. Yeah, that we had to deal. And we yeah, haven't we... touched their sisters yet. Yeah, and that's the thing, though. Uh. You uh, you thought Meg was hard, and you defeated Meg, and you got to Asphodel, and you died, right? Yeah. And then you came back, and suddenly there's Tisiphone and Electo, which is <laughs> which is harder, by the way. <laughs> Murder. Especially like Electo, right? Yeah. Electo Electo is by far. I think we can both can agree that Electo is one of the harder ones. Uh, yeah. to, to Symphony, it was just like, oh, okay, first, first few, and then, like, oh, okay, to change the map, and you, when you realize that it just gets narrower and narrower, you can yeah. kind of figure out, okay, just don't do this, this, and this, and that. Yeah. I like to explain for the about, hardest. Yeah, the thing about the Symphony, right? The Symphony, uh, I underestimated it at first, because the first time I met the Symphony, I, I got no death, you know, because... I don't know. It was it, it, yeah. It was kind of easy. I got cocky. It was a good run. <laughs> yeah, yeah, it, yeah. It's a good run. You know, I have, I have, I have, I have my luck <laughs> at, in that run. And then I realized like, Tiffany, Tiffany things. Uh, 
you she puts you in a narrow place and she put down her bullet hell in the which makes place. you yeah which makes you hard to to maneuver to dodge yeah unless you have athena dash or you have multiple you know. dashes and, <laughs> and yeah if, and if you have multiple dashes Electo, however is it's just a bitch <laughs> it feels like it feels like you cannot get away with from her you know she's like yeah. She's like, uh, she's like a, a hooker in a red light district. You know, she won't get off of you yeah. until you have no resource left. Uh, for for the hooker, it probably be the money, or for Electo, it probably be death defiance. Yeah, like uh, she really said, like you're not going to Asphodel unless you die at least once. <laughs> Pay me a toll fee, fucker. Yeah. Because first. Obviously, all of the Fury Sisters has the bullet hell, and then you have the 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 what is it? Yeah, the, the bullet hell, and then you have the we call it the Pyronado from Genshin. But yeah, the, it's the basically bus sauce. They have bus yeah. sauce throwing throwing around willy nilly and hitting you yeah. in the face. Yeah, and you can't dodge it. And you can't dodge it, but yeah. you can't deflect it. Yeah, you you yeah cannot you cannot deflect it. Because uh okay, this is a bit a bit uh far, but if you remember in sticks, that has also the same kind of thing. But you can uh, dodge you can you can reflect it, right? That you, that you can deflect it. Yeah. But with Electo you cannot. Cannot. And she can uh She throws three at you at once, wasn't it? Yeah, like three at once. And and, and it follows you, which is Huh? <laughs> Which is double. You, you, you're, you're double you, fucked, yeah. essentially. Yeah, you, you'll be fucked, basically. And yeah, it's quite hard for for uh, someone uh, to meet Electo first and not die. Like, completely die. Uh, permanent, not you, permanent you'll be, die, you'll be lying if you meet Electo first yeah. try and then you beat her without any death defiance at all. Mm. Calling you a liar. Very, yeah. very liar. Which is, which is like, I think, yeah, when you think about it, it's like a good game design, which is basically like, oh, right, congrats, you beat Meg. Now you have Now deal with a sister. Yeah, and now deal with a sister, you know, which is more, uh, which is harder and, you know, which is, uh, I guess for me, it's, it kind of motivates me to, you know, to reach Asphodel because, you know, Asphodel, however, it's such a, it's such a pain. <laughs> As for that, it's by far personally for me is the easiest one, just because you can dash a lot. For, for because I, if you if you see how I play, I dash a lot. Yeah, yeah. So but obviously, like, okay, like, uh, POV, like, you beat Mag first. You probably don't have Death Defiance anymore. Most likely. And, yeah, and then you are welcome with uh with a platform scorching hot lava yeah that is filled with lava you know and that for me at least like it's a difficulty spike up because you know with especially for you know the lava and the enemies become harder obviously yeah yeah because first they move a lot and second they hit hard Mm -hmm. hello hard yeah, they hit hella hard. And and then when you realize that you can just, you know, like like Xavier said, you, you can just dash. You, and probably at that time you have a, a lot of good boons already. Hopefully. Right? <laughs> yeah, hopefully. And then you met the the boss of the realm, which is the Hydra. Which right. is yep, the Hydra the bone hydra, not the, the hydra. Bone hydra. And you, you know what? I dare to say this after like six to hours of it playing. The Hydra is actually easiest arguably one. the easiest realm boss. The easiest like final boss for each uh, for, for, for the each, realm. For each biome. For each biome. Yeah. I have to agree because it's very straightforward. Yeah. Like the... Uh, yeah, right. Uh, the Hydra is stationary. <laughs> like child. Yeah. So okay, the the first phase, uh, I called it phase, you know, because it kind of is like that. It's basically the phases, first, yeah. Yeah, the first phase, like it, uh, three heads far apart, 
uh, yeah, take okay. take out yeah, one by one. It's on its own first, you know, the main hit first, and then you you hit it on a certain threshold, and yeah. it will become impervious. Yep. Basically, you cannot attack them. Uh, you you will deal no damage, and then they they uh they put out the three other heads, right? Yeah, basically. Yeah, and then you. You destroy the three the the three heads. Do the same again. And then Smack yeah, him. and then you do the same thing again, uh, dealing damage to the to the main head, and it become impervious again. And this time, there went six heads. You know, so you basically need yeah. So if you know the pattern, then basically it's the easiest boss of the for the uh for the realm. Easiest boss basically. Super easy. And, yeah, and at this point you would have a lot of boons, but the bullet, the bullet head would definitely kill you one way or another if you know. If you're not careful. For it, yeah, if you if you're not careful, yeah. Uh, and yeah, so so the hydra, yeah, the hydra is probably the easiest, and I think yeah, I think it took me lesser time to actually defeat the hydra than to actually defeat Meg. <laughs> 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 because you know it's predictable and all, yeah, exactly. and then you reach yeah, and then you reach Elysium. Uh, Elysium, Elysium is basically almost like okay, everyone is just a tank early, early yeah, on. Every everyone is a tank. There's there's not uh fortunately it, there's not like environmental hazard except for the for the shields for the shields and the traps right. Yep. But mm. uh yeah the enemies are very tanky because you know in in the story elysium is the place of noble warriors especially as well Hala. yeah so basically your enemies were an experienced fighter back back in their back in their heyday know, yeah back back in their heyday so like um obviously the first few chambers they don't have shields on and, and like yeah, I guess like after four chambers, you will have like, uh, almost all of them has shield. Shield. And then when they, yeah, and then when they, they die, they they, uh, their, their souls. They turn into shades. Yes. Yeah. Their their shades also has a has an armor. Also has a shield. Yeah. And if you don't kill the the shades, uh, fast enough, then they will regenerate. And they would turn you back know. into the former glory, and you yeah. have to do it all over again. Yeah, which is yeah, which is annoying. You know, tanky stuff, uh, regenerate stuff. No one likes a damage like, punch. Yeah, N- no one's like it. Which is yeah, you know, Elysium is such a is such a headache because you know you have, and then you have the 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 butterfly ball. The butterfly <laughs> boss. The butterfly boss is just as straightforward as this. You know, you just smack it a bunch of times. Yeah. You just smack it, but you know, you 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 know you ca- you cannot tell it's an attack because you know it's a slow attack the butterflies, but it will damage you every second of it. Yep, it's a DOT every- thing. Yeah, and then you have the f- the chariots. Oh my god, Char- the chariot. We don't talk about chariot. The less we talk <laughs> about it, the less depressed we'll be. Yeah, both chariots, by the way. The uh, the kamikaze chariots and just the chariot. Yeah, the chariot is a. Is tanky as hell. Like why? <laughs> I, but I get it, you know. I mean, higher, yeah, higher difficulty, I guess. And then we reach to the show, the show of the 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 stadium of Elysium. Theseus mm-hmm. and his buddy Asterius. Yeah. Uh, the Minotaur Asterius. The Asterius is it's a bit nicer. Yeah, which is which is like. Uh, you know, it's a pain because the Ram boss, Thesis and Asterius is it's just, you know, like I said, pain. Asterius has heavy hitting. He's he's basically the emphasis of Elysium. Very yeah. tanky and then very... Very tanky, very, very hard hitting. And while Theseus, you know, Theseus... This is a bitch. Will not, uh, Theseus will not actively hurt you because, you know, obviously... Uh, as uh, once Asterius, the, do yeah, my bidding. Once you enter the arena, Asterius will jump into you uh, already, and Asterius will just be there with his spear, you know, ready to snipe you every every chance he gets. 
fucking fucking Theseus, man. Yeah. And that, yeah, and then that's why you said, right, okay, like, uh, I, I got a, I got a tip from, from Xavier, which is like, okay, you kill Asterius first, because if you, if you, if you damage Theseus first, then Theseus has a second phase, quote on wood, which is like calling the gods that you don't have the wounds of. Which makes the fight him. every single time, makes the fight sort of fun and fresh, you know? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is like which is a nice detail. Like, if you don't take any of Zeus' boons, then he will call Zeus for help. Which is, I think, oh my god, it's such a, it's such a cool detail. You know? It's cool. It's a nice small detail. And another thing, I I might be wrong, I but I've noticed that all the boons that he's called is also basically you have access to these. So, like for example, the calls and everything, he has it as well. So basically, basically, he has access to what you have. Basically, yeah, basically. Nothing nothing feels like a cheap shot. Yeah, yeah, yeah. literally, yeah, literally. As I, you know, uh, uh, when I say like Theseus uh, help, it's more like a trial of the gods, more more than your own call, you know? Yep, betrayal of the gods. Yeah. It's, it's basically, choose mommy, don't choose daddy. <laughs> Uh okay, I, I actually recently I got uh I got achievement right. Mm-hmm. I I there was a between Zeus and Ares. You know who I choose. Uh, right? I take an Ares. Yes, I I, I take Ares. Okay, but cool. At that time, I had Zeus call. Wait, you cannot use your call, so, you right? Know, during Zeus, you can. You can. Actually. It was funny. That, but, that, that's kind of yeah. funny. Yeah, like I I remember like Zeus said oh. You you want it help now? <laughs> Something like that. <laughs> oh, <laughs> yeah. nice. Yeah, there's the detail. There's the details. Yeah. yeah, which is fun. Like, every single detail that you did, like, it it really seems like, uh, how is it? It's, it doesn't supposed to, to, you know, affect you in any ways because, you know. It's a, just a nice touch. Yeah, it's just, it's just a nice touch. Yeah. It also, it also in a way, because I think, okay, we can just sum it up here by saying that Styx is basically the combination of all three of those realms. And the yeah. boss fight is just a boss fight. It's another boss fight with its own uh, tricks up its yeah. sleeve, right? Because we can move yeah. on to the to our best part, which is the dialogues and essentially the story. Yeah, oh my god, the right thing. You know, I, I obviously, I, I have all, you know, 200, 200, not 200, like 150 plus runs. And I still only like uh, defeated Hades once. And you're so barely I... scratching the surface. Yeah, and and that's not the end game, you know. Well, oh. it has a lot of other 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 stories that you know, especially if you if you like story driven like like I do. Like I like how uh, how a game like uh, this, how the story goes, you know. And Hades has a lot of it, you know. Yeah, and not to mention, okay, this is this is the fun part, right? Where here the interesting fact about Hades is that Hades has over two hundred thousand lines, more yeah. than a novel. More, I think, is it long? I think it's longer than the Lord of the Rings combined. Oh God! And then all of those lines are recorded. Yeah, like voice too. Voice and also. You know the the quirky thing is haha Kron has is his his is also recorded in like five hundred different ways, but yeah you know that that looks like an overkill you know <laughs> because they they have a have heavy emphasis on the they have heavy heavy emphasis on writing mm-hmm. writing is how you uh, how super giant games wanted to deal with their games it's a roguelike heavy writing. Pyre yeah. is an RPG, I think, writing. All of it is heavy writing. Yeah. So now, what happens is, is that, okay, um, not to mention, right, this is being made during COVID. Yes. They, like, Darren Corp, uh, bless that man, the sound director, and also voice of Zagreus and Skelly, had mm-hmm. to buy a sound booth and install it to his home. 
oh and, God. and deal with construction outside while he records. <laughs> God, the yeah, dedication, that, the dedication yeah, on him, man. Dedication, yeah. And yeah, it, yeah, not, yeah, not to mention, like, obviously, all of the other characters has a lot of lines already, and imagine how many lines there is for Zagreus, you know? Exactly. And yeah. not to mention that they actually, during the COVID times, they actually mailed out uh, microphones and everything, recording things to these voice actors. Uh, oh, yeah, because, for, yeah, because for they cannot, yeah, they cannot record in a room because, you know, COVID. Exactly. Uh, yeah. Because of COVID, so they cannot, they cannot just stay in one room with... They can't go to a recording booth. Yeah. yeah, exactly. And then, um, what, what these... Uh, and also, the, the whole dialogue is supposed to tell something about the character always. Mm-hmm. And the thing is, uh, is that also the dialogue uh branch and everything was created so that in a way you can because roguelites are a game that you're supposed to play over and over and over and over and over again well there are chances that you get multiple like repeating lines the their kind of theory is that the, the whole thing that they want to do that they want to make the dialogue system uh branch off not only by checking out te- by checking out uh checklists of what you've achieved in the game and what you've done in, uh, in certain runs and subsequent runs but it's to make sure that you can play this game for about a hundred hours and will never even encounter a one same dialogue even once yeah right that is insane to think about yes it's especially right okay like uh every time you pick a boon right mm. you would have uh you have uh the god saying a dialogue right dialogue too. yeah and and it's different every time. It's different. And uh, this is a bit, I don't know, a bit kind of spoilers. <laughs> but especially if you reach Elysium, then you would find Thanatos in it. Uh-huh. Yes. <laughs> and then, like, uh, gods such as uh, Ares knows. Uh, Ares and Hermes. Ares knows has to work Thanatos. with Thanatos. Yeah. So... Uh, during my first time met Thanatos, right? I was like, okay, uh, this guy, this guy, this guy, and then I met Harris, and he's like, oh, so he, so you met Thanatos, so you know your encounter somehow is being known by the game, and it being you know being acknowledged. Basically, what the, the game, game they they wanted to make the game in a way where like, hey, we see what you did there, we see yeah. what you did. So, and you see, and and we see what you have achieved, and all you know. Yeah, exactly. Here's a here's a funny tidbit. There was a, if you met the meter and you play, uh, you get Zeus. Zeus has something to say about the meter. It's like, oh, uh, something around the lines of, oh, I might have pissed her off as well, because uh, I was responsible for hooking up Zeus, uh, Hades, and Persephone. Because in in Greek, yeah, interesting. The dialogues are also referencing Greek lore that we have in real life. So yeah, like, so like based based on the mythology, so like the stories in game and their myths of their own are quite similar. But yeah. obviously, there's also like the creators' uh, creativity put on it, right? Of course, there's a creative spin, and there's like certain yeah. things like, oh hey, uh, the whole story of like Zagreus killing something that he tells Orpheus was actually part of an actual legend but in the game it's propped up to be a prank uh that zagris tells to orpheus to mm-hmm. make him more motivated to to sing yeah yeah which is funny and then okay so and then there's like things where it's like oh do you know why the meter is ice powers actually uh is it because like uh she was pissed off so she yes. was like, okay I don't I I don't I don't want to bring warmth anymore, you know. I was I'm this ice cold now. She's basically like that. The reason is she is the goddess of harvest. Mm-hmm. Uh not to pick up his Uranus. Um But she's basically like, okay, here's food and everything, and of course spring's the best time to do harvest and everything, right? When Persephone was gone, she was sulking. Because you know Persephone's gone, and then she got even mad because you know a Hades took her, uh, took her, and she sulked. So nothing grew, nothing there. And there, there was a long famine, and that famine was basically uh, repurposed into winter. Mm-hmm. 
so nothing is growing at all ah. so the when in actual greek myth is that because Persef persephone decides that oh maybe my mom's a bit missing me can i go up to the, to the living room and say oh sure and uh and some some reports that hades per, uh, per, uh, forcibly gave persephone the pomegranate of the underworld but in some recounts uh she willingly took it and i'm willing to take the the, the, the nicer one the better one because that sounds more sweet so yeah she took it and then meaning that she can only see the meter in certain times so basically it's it's their way of trying to rationalize this the four seasons mm. so when when winter kicks in the meter is sad because for seven years in the underworld and when spring comes ah, in i see the meter the meter is happy and she can finally start harvest and everything again ah okay that's that's a that's a that's a new knowledge for me because i never because honestly, i i've been i've been interested in mythologies but i never really delve in deeper than that but because pre interesting pre-abrahamic religion a lot yeah. of the religion and pantheons is to rationalize whatever's going on around them before science yeah, yeah. was created everything was rationalized by mystics and uh and beliefs so yeah. that's why we have a bunch of pantheon when uh, our current times we are at least in abrahamic especially they only have one uh, uh more or less like one god or one deity to to worship and that's also like uh rational uh, not rationalized like uh the existence of uh mythical creatures right yep exactly like how like like how minotaur was basically the earthquake you know yep exactly uh minutes after was the earthquake and then there's the story of how what was it called um okay i forgot actually the the one i'm trying to recall but the other thing is that uh do you want to know why hades uh here's also another fun another greek fun fact you know why hades is actually kind of uh is scared but uh, is feared by by many right he's the god of the underworld meaning that he rums, he rules over death right he rules over death and back then there was a mistake that you cannot say the names of the gods as is so you're not supposed to say hades you're not supposed to say zeus he ah. he he was something about like he's something something rule of the underworld and something, something like voldemort or something yeah he shall not be named yeah he shall not be named yeah and that's fair that is fair and and it's why that he she has this garner reputation because everyone fears death everyone has never liked death yeah yeah sisyphus tried to cheat death and we see what happened to him <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean a lot of people like already sitting uh like in greek mythology uh, like a lot of people already sitting there right yep exactly and uh, and then there's that one fucker who who got horny for one for death um <laughs> tried to get to persephone and that did not end well dc you should watch your brother mola <laughs> but that's the fun thing is that these these greek myths that we read they repurpose into the story and it has something fresh takes on it some yeah. some are like modernized of course and some fiction and some is like haha just kidding it didn't happen yeah. we pranked you like uh obviously because you know uh mythology although it is written it is kinda it is written shared but, verbally. yeah shared verbally and you know it has a, a lot of variation a lot of holes that you know uh having another like especially modernized variation is honestly welcome you know yeah exactly it's fun to see all of this all come uh into into the story have their own personality and still fits right it's yeah. amazing and then and and somehow they make it work into the game i know right and the yeah. best part is is that it doesn't help it doesn't help the fact that the game looks pretty which yes. moves to our next topic the presentation oh my god the presentation you can oh go first god. honestly to tell you the truth i did not have any notes for this so <laughs> I, <think> I, <laughs> I mean i did give you the, the heads up but i yeah, guess yeah 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 
yeah, but you know. <laughs> I mean, you can you okay. can probably uh, tell how you how you look at it. You don't have to write notes for this one, I guess. Yep. Okay, like, uh, okay, like the designs, right? Yep. For for Zagreus or for all the uh for all of the uh characters, right? Mm-hmm. Honestly, right. The first thing that I saw, I think, was. Uh, the first thing, the first time that I saw someone playing it was Jacksepticeye, I think. It is. Uh, yeah, it is. Oh shit! I never knew about that. I think he never posted, but he streamed on Twitch. Ah, uh, okay, that makes sense. Yeah. So he said like, oh, like, uh, I never saw him play it, but like, uh, he said some. He he tweeted out like, oh, uh, he he got hooked on Hades, right? Mm-hmm. So I was like, oh, what is what is this Hades Hades game, right? So I googled it and I I'm I was already in awe, like how like so the the design is so good that the coloring and all you know it's very heavily inked. Uh, the yeah. art style is heavily inked, almost like a comic book style, where it's like uh, uh the shade is harsh, uh black, like how I did with your drawings actually. Yeah, and thank you for drawing it. <laughs> yeah, it was a fun yeah, time. Like, yeah, every like. Uh, every yeah, every path, every, every step is just so vibrant, and not to mention like every single uh character design is also very detailed. You know, to- even do yeah, even Dusa has some details. You know, even just the head of a gorgon. Acute details, right? <laughs> yeah. Props to artist Gen Z. Yes, that is her name. J e n z e e Gen Z. She worked on Bastion. She worked. She worked on the previous, all all the other previous Super Giant games as well, actually. And not to mention, you know, Super Giant games has all all of them has good art style. Just so all good. of them, and all of them, yeah. And mind you, this is a team of more more or less twenty people, in and out. They have twenty people making a game like this that is super intricate. Yeah, and this is super considered... intricate, super in depth, super detailed, and yeah, and like you said, on top of it, they did it on um, in COVID. Yeah, in COVID during the pandemic, which is oh my god, so mind blowing to think about. And it's it's that that's just like the surface of it, right? Like people, oh, that's their job. No, no, yes, but a small team like that. For a big situation like that, it's it's mind boggling to to wrap your head yeah. around. It. Yeah. There are some all, small all, yeah, all we can say is like the the team, the team, right? The team that makes it the all, all of them is like so ambitious, so determined. And not to mention, these people yeah. in the team have very good relationship with each other. Like yeah. you could, if, if you look at the documentary by No Clip, uh, there are some uh, by Befta. You can see the way they talk. Uh, obviously, there's professionalism, but on some of the small bits, you can kind of see hints of like, yeah, they like uh, working with each other. It's yeah. meaning that everyone, for the most part, is good to each other. It's yeah, it's not just for business. It's hard to rock, see that you know? in a yeah. game company, you know, these days. Yeah, I guess right for uh, probably because it's PTE. Yeah. Right. Indie, indie then, is a... Yeah. But then again, right? Indie, like, if they make quite some games, it can be mainstream. Oh, definitely. Right. Indie games yeah. are, I would argue, is the best uh, groups of peop- uh, developers that are right now spearheading the game industry because indie games are, if you want crazy ideas being made, you can look at indie games. With crazy idea also comes with flops, but there's the idea. The idea is there, it's being made, it's developed, and it's being thrown out there without the worries of like a big wig company. Big wig companies, yeah. AAA games, always make the same game over and over and over and over again, and it's kind of tiring. Yeah. That's my personal take. That's why I like indie game is the few games that I really hope that I will never have to, uh, that I will never have to resort to pirating. I don't I care mean, about pirating yeah. fucking Ubisoft games. Corporate games, yeah. I, yeah. I mean, obviously, there's a lot of you know corporate games that that is also good, but you know, it's rather how do you say this? Uh, 
non unique sometimes you know yeah because, they they don't yeah. because they play safe they don't they, want yeah, to they play safe. yeah they they have a market in the they, they have they have a company to run you know yeah they have a com yeah, yeah they have a company to run and they have mouths to feed <laughs> they have mouths to feed uh usually but usually it's usually the mouth of the ceos so fuck you <laughs> And then you have like indie indie companies like indie game developers. They're like, uh, we're gonna put all of our resources here. We're gonna put a lot of our creative creativity in here. What happens later? What works works. Uh, what doesn't we yeah, throw if it, it? If it works works. If it's flop, it, it's flop. You know. And not to mention that fun fact. Uh, at least the the the, the director uh, Amiro, I think his name is. And also the uh the art director, I forgot his name. Let me check real quick. Art director, super giant. Uh, not the art director. Art director is Gen Gen Z. Uh, the other guy, uh, Greg Greg Kasavin. Uh, one of the these two are actually ex EA workers. During the Command and Conquer uh days, which is wait, which is pre two thousand ten. They left EA to start this company and make the game. It's, it's mind-boggling that they can find. Which there, I say, a good move. <laughs> you know, you know what I guess. Leave, leave EA, leave EA, and come here because you don't know how many EA, uh, how many games. Yeah, like, fucked from you over. Small companies that yeah fucked over. You know. We but today. But today, this today we're not talk, we're not bashing game companies. That that's my job yeah. on on a regular yeah. basis. After I had too many coffees to drink. Now we talk about arts, right? Let's talk, talk about the music. Let's fucking oh go, Derek Corp. Bless that man. Thank you for existing. <laughs> like, oh my god! Like I don't know why like indie game developers has such a good soundtrack. You know, like. You know how you know you know how I feel about Undertale, you know. Oh yeah, of course. Oh, Toby Fox has such a good thinking on how to make game music. Like, oh my god, that man! And not uh, and then again, you know, he says the music in this game is so good. Here's the thing about the uh, here's here's a fun story about the Dark Corp about Hades is that I if I remember correctly that this. You listen to his song. It has a hint of metal in it, right? Yeah, 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 yeah. This was his first the time first, uh, yeah. roping around metal. Really? Yeah. Uh, it's his first like uh, project that he wants to put metal in it, and he's practicing it. He practiced, ah. learned everything new, and he tried to apply it in music. Um, especially, you could hear it in Elysium. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And boss fight, isn't it? And boss fight, exactly. Like this is his first rodeo and in a way a bit of his first challenge about uh, regarding the 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 song uh for hades which is mm -hmm. it's it's uh the it's so it's so like uh so mind-boggling that you have the goal to basically make new music and What's it called? Make make music, learn something new, uh, uh, and then just make it for a game. Like you just learn it, fresh fresh from the oven. You know. Yeah. Oh my god, the the music in this game, like, okay, uh, when you when you first like uh defeated Hades, right? You went to this uh. Obviously, you went to, uh, you got outside. You know, you went to the surface. Um, you got to, uh, you you got to Greece in the end. You know, we got in the end of the game, and then you met Persephone, and I remember like the the music when you talk to Persephone is just so soft, so warm that I was just like, oh my god, I just I just want to stay here forever, but. Obviously, even in game, you cannot, you know. And uh, uh, literally, sad, literally, yeah. she, uh, the the force of uh, you know the dominion of Hades pulls you back, you know. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, that's the music. I really like the music of this game. You know, from the fighting 
uh, from the fighting uh, music to the fight, uh, the fight team, the battle team, to like each and every, not each. Like I know, Thanatos have their have his own. Team. Everyone has you know? their own team, I think, from a Yeah, yeah. Like oh, like how? Oh my god! Like the first time I meet, I met Eurydice. I was yeah. like, oh my god! I just, I just stand there and listen to her singing. You know. In, you know, uh, Eurydice. Eurydice is like the what's called. You know, the singer next to Orpheus. You know, Orpheus is yeah, Orpheus yeah. is the singer, the best singer in Greece. Yeah, oh, and, yeah, and and in the story, like they are husband and wife, basically. Yep. So, so uh, cool. yeah, so Wait. yeah, you really see it is in Asphodel and Orpheus. You, uh, the he he is in your house. He he is in the house. He is your court musician yeah, in is, in the house yeah, of Hades. Yeah. So basically, you can just uh, there's some sometimes he would sing. I he think he had seen this, before for yeah, for for before, yeah. and you know you can change the you know technically you can change the the music in the house if you buy it you know if you have if you have free crystals lying around why not well, yeah why not I already bought it <laughs> of course you have <laughs> okay what is there to say less uh, what is yeah. what's there to add more it's the game the game and. This is probably like because that's how big up this game is. There's more, most likely. Uh, there's there more most likely be a lot of people's first uh roguelites. Mm-hmm. First roguelite. It's, it's definitely my first taste of a proper roguelite. And you know, yeah, it's, and it's my first time also. You know, having fast paced roguelite some some combat something like that. You know, which uh, which hammers home that. Roguelites oh. are amazing. So we got past Hades. Time to pop. So now, now it's for me to just ro- rain on roguelites. Oh no. <laughs> roguelites are basically a game that you can just get in, get out. Very quickly. Easy as pie. You don't have to think too much about it. And when you die, you just try again. Right? Yeah. And Hades uh, has this thing where it. It has a story and everything, so everything feels like a linear progression. Not all roguelites feel like a progression. I'm pretty yeah. sure you played till the uh, Slate Aspire. You don't feel like there's a progression of some sort, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It just feels your skill it's is just being a, progressed. Yeah, yeah. skill and skill and skill, right? Yeah. Exactly. It's it's there. Your roguelites are never meant to end. Uh outside of Hades, most of the time, it's never meant to end. There's no real end uh, to it. And that's what makes it fun. It's just there to play casually about it. Yeah, just like, uh, how is it? Uh, basically, you just learn how to be better and better and better and just proceed yourself to see like how far can you go, you know? And... It's 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 just it's nice. It's Hades is fun. If you look at their development documentary, it cl- it's as clear as day that they are enjoying the game. They're enjoying the process to some degree with minor yeah. things like the announcement and being leaked out and everything. And their office got broken in during COVID, but that's beyond that. They they got. Uh, they they managed to basically turn a concept into reality with a small yeah. team, and they even claim themselves that they do not see things too far ahead. So mm-hmm. basically, in a way, Hades and the rest of the games, they made it because they want that. In a way, they just want to, and it's yeah. also the Super Giant games. All their games are made as a, in a response to their cr- previous game that they made. So with Pyre was the born of branching narratives. Hades is like everything cranked to eleven. Yeah. Dialogues are cranked to eleven. Gameplay weapon variety from Bastion cranked to eleven. Transistors, isometric view and everything, all that. It's it's so just endearing to watch a bunch of people trying their best 
to 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 make because you can see the anxiety in them how yeah, it's yeah. like oh maybe we don't know if this is gonna work or not mm. and it shows that you know these game devs are human at the end of the day it's yeah, sweet they, they, yeah they experience growth they experience a lot of things you know they have yeah especially you know they, they have experiences especially from their uh later games and they probably would like uh to see like oh what's to add what's to remove and they make a game that is you know essentially better and you know uh since hades is basically their latest game it is their best game then of course this is their yeah. best game and we whatever would love com- yeah whatever comes after hades i'm buying I would it love to play it yeah I guess that's the end of it. That's the closing act of it. Mm-hmm. Okay, so that's it. So yes. Oh yeah. If you guys wants to play Hades and very interested, eh, Hades has a sale right now on Steam. Hades has a sale right now, which yeah. is not just, planned. We were not paid yeah. by Supergiant. I wish Supergiant, please hire me. I love you. <laughs> so but does any ha- any hack and slash games on Steam is on not every but. It's not Some, all of it. Yeah. It's currently on sta- on sale. If you want to try Hades out, go. This mm. is the perfect time. There's a sale, yeah. and I think, yeah, I think it was like fifty percent. I think. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. And you just only buy it one go. You know, there's no DLCs. There's no anything. You just buy that game, yep. and everything's in their package. Because these people wanted that when one point comes out, there there will be no more content to be updated, only fixes. Mm. So everything is shipped out on day one. Which is something that you do not see in any devs in the recent time that did this very well. Uh, it did this perfectly outside of FromSoft, which FromSoft is a different caliber and zone that we can talk about it in another day. But I might be be alone because I I cannot poison this man to play role, uh play souls like yet. Yeah. It's work. It's it's yeah. it's. I'm working on it. I uh, you know what I've been interested in souls like, but like you said, like you know I I got. A taste of roguelite so i just might to just uh lay down and play a lot of more roguelites until i have the energy to play so it's like you know <laughs> and maybe you should try and maybe you should try something like um try to remember from top of my head hollow knight or blasphemous those two mm-hmm. will be a good branching point for you if you want to slowly inch your way into souls like mm. I guess that's it for us. Uh, do you have anything else to add? Uh, just like I said, uh, you know what? If if you're interested in the game, check it out. You know, it's a good game. The the people that 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 is behind that is behind it, just like we said, is very ambitious, very uh, very strong in in their suit. You know, so why not? just have it a go and see how you like it you you might you might like it you might enjoy it and you might get all the super giant games as well yeah that's all for us that's all for us thank you